15 years ago, I began working on the idea of having an underwater studio. It was a simple but bold idea, and it's taken me on an incredible journey. I began with asking the question, so how do you turn life into art? For me, I started with the fundamentals and focused on three things, immersion, transparency, and fluidity. And then I looked to nature. I looked to find the Hydra Medusa, the most beautiful creatures on this planet, and to watch what I could only describe as an underwater ballet. And I wondered how I could block out the white noise of the urban environment and create a studio practice that was as fluid and delicate and as harmonious as this beautiful sea creature. Now, I must admit, I began with somewhat uh, frustrating constraints. It wasn't quite the ocean that I had imagined, and as gallery curators, were delighted that I was prepared to put my long body into confined spaces and to set myself in a gel medium for hours on end under the watchful eye of medics, of course, and a live audience. I justified it by, by looking to understand the somatic cadence of my own body. Of course, that was all that I could hear, and with the help of hydrophones and a sound artist, the audience could hear that too. So while I focused on the psychological and the physiological transformations or body shocks, I was literally, I was literally a human being in a human-sized Petri dish. And I was hoping there, suspended in that medium, to deepen an understanding of the protocols, the technologies and requirements for explorers and researchers of extreme spaces, and to also make commentary on the kind of perceived parallels in modern science firsthand. Today, when I invite you into my studio, you, it could be a workshop, a laboratory or a stage. It could be anywhere from the depths of the ocean to a virtual network system. Immersed in high-tech or absolutely no tech whatsoever, surrounded by everything from nature to culture and everything in between. It is the ideas themselves that challenge me to consecrate my energies in numerous ways. Many years on, I can look back and say that I am deeply inspired by the space analog environment of the ocean. And I'm captivated, captivated by the human performance behaviors and limits in these extreme spaces. In order to undertake this work, I must literally dive in. For example, I work as a full-time commercial diver for many months of the year, diving in zero, zero visibility in remote locations around the world. I also collaborate with biotechnologists, with an underwater engineers, with composers and dancers and new media artists. The context in which I'm working is always changing. Yet my responses, my desires, my emotions remain entirely human. I mean, that's something we can all relate to. So over the last 15 years, I've developed a body of work, including live laboratory-style performances and art exhibitions. It's easy for me to now look back and to see my fascination for this human exploration in extreme environments, such as the deep sea and out of space, both in the way that I play with the aesthetics of life support and also the raw, poetic language of the human body as it struggles with the confrontation of the body shocks and the stresses of extreme spaces. Now, that's not for everyone, but despite the uncertainty and the solitude, the professional life of an artist ebbs and flows. It is a vocation much less than a career, and it is as disciplined as it is liquid or liquid. Artists take on a responsibility. They're as storytellers, as sculptors, writers, luminaries, aesthetes, cultural custodians. 
working in co cooperation with engineers, scientists and technologists, I can confidently say that every space, space project needs an artist. It's a bold statement. But being an artist is an attitude. It is a belief and a methodology. It is a noun, a verb and an adjective all in one. It is a way of being in the world that leaves behind clues and tools and artifacts. Yet there is no unifying science, law or algorithm to predict the results of an artist. And that can be a little challenging for uh, space agencies, for sure. But it's a very obvious and vital challenge at that. Artists are called to investigate, to question, to seek answers, to go beyond their known worlds, to allow themselves to take risks, allow free fall and surrender, to harness that deep feeling, again, of surrender, to dive into unknown spaces, like the ocean embrace, nurtured and buoyed up by the raw elements of nature, so that you can share and feel and experience notions of the sublime. And to know the struggle of real life as our spirits rise and fall with each triumph and failure, each connection and disconnection, each good time and sad time, each pause and moment between life and death. Now it might surprise you to know that actually my background in the visual and performing arts actually plays a critical role in my engagement with space. Traditional training at the College of the Arts in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia, taught me the importance of mastering the foundations, the fundamentals of any discipline before you tried to abstract them and make them your own. I have also learned that by transforming a performance as research in practice approach to both scientific methods and technological entrepreneurship, that I am able to delve into the design of experimental architectures and the biopolitics of living and working in extreme environments, usually underwater, as both the inventor and the tool, I can't believe I've just called myself a tool, but <laughs> the researcher and the research subject, the producer and the performer. I think a number of the slides have halted, so I'll just fast forward through them. So this autobiographical and multidisciplinary approach to art making and research is deeply seeded in the traditions and discourses across the arts. Yet within the con context of a space research mission, a project or field work, it is considered highly experimental, even unethical, novel and disruptive. When I collaborate with artists, scientists and architects, I deliberately set out to create a new experimental space. Now take a moment to imagine that sanctuary in your own lives where your dreams are realised, where your ideas are tested, digested, discarded, monumentalised, glorified, or celebrated. It might be your office, your garden or your car, during a meditation or a high intensity workout. It could be as you're sipping coffee at your favorite cafe while you're people watching. Creativity, imagination and expression in form, line or movement are certainly not exclusive to artists. When everything falls into place and you nail a rare moment of insight or brilliance, that reveals that perfect moment in time, that understanding about yourself in the world that you've been trying to figure out until that very moment, everything tells you that that is the reward. That is the confirmation of your calling. That is the prize. And in Australia, we would cry out, Eureka! And I guess here at ISU, we would stand together and call out ISU Ra. It is part of the reason that I am here today. 
like you, embracing the three eyes, interdisciplinary, international and interculturalism. Because good art, like good science and good technologies, creates good policies, good societies and good cultures. At ISU, while focusing on rapidly advancing technologies and the future we wish to create and be a part of, while learning from the extraordinary work of pioneers before us, we study the cultural dimensions of space. Its connection is at our core. Regardless of our specific industry backgrounds, from law to management and earth sciences, we develop the protocols between space and art practice. We have a duty to create, to form, to architect, to reveal, and to share the human experience, because you understand the human role in making space accessible, relevant, and indeed possible. Our space community embraces unique and innovative pathways, enabled by exponential growth areas and creative and cultural practitioners. Indeed, there are many aspects of art and science that contribute, inspire, and support the advancement of space and space-related activities. And with multiple positive spin-off technologies and creative energies for enhancement, enhancing the quality of life on Earth. Now, last year in July, I participated in the very first topical team workshop for art and science at ESA in the European Astronaut Training Centre in Cologne. Our mission was to develop a an ESA arts initiative between international artists and members of the ESA Sp Human Space Flight and Exploration Directorate. Focusing on a range of types of relationships between artists and scientists, we surveyed the recent contemporary history of, of artists working with and within space flight and ground-based science. We sought to demonstrate the skills, the insights and the approach of artists to understand their working methodologies, to explore the potential outcomes, including valuable contributions to space communication, education and outreach. We dove deeper into the possibilities and highlighted relationships between arts and science, including payloads flown in space, and recent artworks by artists in human spaceflight, microgravity and exploration, including art and science projects that both illustrated the science and critiqued, illuminated or celebrated aspects of the human engineering, science and technology. Artists, scientists, astronauts, writers, architects, curators from all over the globe were selected to share insights and discoveries about their projects alongside the ESA professionals. One scientist disrupted our flow a little to ask the brilliant question, well, why do artists need scientists? As real collaborators, explorers, inventors and, uh, and artists together can truly move science and engineering forward. And by co-creating artwork, they can improve science and technology communication. Together, artists and scientists may invent, design and explore imagined futures with the intent to re-engage the fundamental creativity of human performance, expression and behaviours at the extremes of exploration and curiosity. There lies the vital ingredient for, mutual, for the mutual pursuit of discovery. Think about your own work and that precious moment when the penny drops and the idea free falls somehow. When the potential to inspire, inform and create an exchange and to seed a new idea, to seed something new. When the dots have been connected in, the new, in a new way. When the words of two separate disciplines are scrambled and then put back together to form new languages and new meanings when disruptions to long-standing thought patterns are given the chance to breathe and given the chance to come to life on their own. There is an inherent possibility to transfer new skills, 
build new knowledge, explore new relationships, and transform ordinariness into extraordinariness. And that is the risk, that is the intoxicating drive, that is the possibility that art solves a rare par paradigm. In the words of Tracy Benson, it might reveal a critical challenge. It recognises a poignant conundrum. Illustrate an historic moment or movement or music. Transmute an infinite connection or time. Transcend the lim limitations of genre or politics. And it is this reason that open space is vital. Think about your own work for a moment. And just imagine the possibilities. You can work with artists too. You can build su successful collaborative relationships. And you can form new teams. So how do you make the first move? Well, if you're not sure, I've developed two little templates. And it's going, I've never tested this before. But we'll start with um, a little poem that you could use from science to art, and we'll just see how that goes. So, try not to feel too nervous. Take a few deep breaths and relax. Okay. My dear art, have you ever loved when you weren't supposed to care? Instincts tell you that the love is wrong, but you know the love is there. Friends and family might try to stop you, but your heart knows the truth. Colleagues and managers might try to stop you, but your mind knows the truth. Society might not understand. It's not a question of training or discipline, because the feelings you have are certainly real. Funding bodies might not understand either. It's not a question of requirements or KPIs, because the outcomes are certainly valid. As you feel it happening to you, perhaps in some other universe, or perhaps in some other time, perhaps our souls met at some other university, but perhaps it doesn't matter, for you know the match is perfect. In your heart and in your mind, for you feel so connected, you feel so understood. You know where this is headed and you know this would be good. Yours sincerely, science. We'll give it a go. And this one's a little trickier. This is from art to science. And I have to tell myself not to get too giddy or excited. But, um, so just breathe right down into your ad abdomen. Okay, and start. Dear science, well, this is big. <laughs> Dear science, have you ever seen the future when you've looked into someone's eyes? It's as if you suddenly realised this was meant to be. As you feel yourself being drawn oh so willingly into the warm embrace, you really shouldn't, I know, but let yourself go and surrender to those feelings. But what would it be like if you chose this? What would it feel like to give yourself over to the warm rush of anticipation and pleasure you get from art as you've come to understanding of another discipline, as you open your heart to another right now? Love art. In all seriousness, it's not all hokey pokey, it's not all touchy feely, it's not all fairy tales and make believe, it's not all Greek tragedies and pop songs, and it's not all science fiction and fantasy. And art is nothing to be afraid of. As artists and scientists and engineers working together, we build upon a diverse framework of understanding, and we also share in tools and processes of investigation. And by jointly stepping into new worlds and new territories, with common purpose and mutual respect for curiosity, there emerges opportunities for encounters that offer us an alternative viewpoint on things. As rapidly adva advancing te technologies, intersecting biology and computation, for example, 
pro provide ripe opportunities for new space-related design and engineering approaches, we are now free to synchronize the arts and scientists, or sciences, to look beyond the limitations of our own planetary orb, to see, to hear, to feel and touch and discover an entirely new universe of possibilities from within and without ourselves. It is time for new energies. It is time for new languages. It is time for new ideas. It is time to match the radical technological advancement and entrepreneurial fervor that we see in global space activities. So as you architect new dreams and boldly explore new frontiers, in search of answers and resources, find the inner resources. Be a champion of diversity, true diversity. Be a part of open source space and be open to the arts. I'm here because of your vision. I'm here because of your courage and your dreams and I'm incredibly grateful to have such a muse. From inner space to outer space, from deep space to ocean space, from cyberspace to real space, every space project needs an artist. And that is why I will live and work underwater on Earth for your next space project. Thank you. <laughs>